So hi there and welcome back to Triplicate and the second video on our super duper a groundbreaking radical mold breaking etc 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 synthesizer we are designing and building which still hasn't got a name but I'm sure one will come to me at some point so Last time we decided this synthesizer was not going to have oscillators and envelopes and so on and so forth. The conventional building blocks of a synthesizer, it wasn't going to have a keyboard, a black and white piano style keyboard. It wasn't going to have any MIDI and for definite it was going to have some attitude. Uh, so what is it going to have? Uh, well, let's try and decide that now. So, to that end, we'll sort of backtrack a bit and do a bit of sort of historical stuff on my part as well, which is why we have these things wrapped in cardboard on here, which I will explain. Okay, so after I did the pole saw and with not having any success with that, I changed tack a bit and decided to do a collaborative project. Um, more to do with uh, any particular synthesis technique but to do with being able to uh, play electronic music not with the keyboard and the problem with it was that um, firstly uh, to do a collaborative project I realise you actually need to start with some collaborators rather than just trying to do a load of stuff and find somebody to pick it up and secondly, I'm not really a particularly collaborative person. Um, so that's all. And then I sort of retired and went over to doing YouTube stuff instead. And the major problem with this was it was a MIDI based thing. Now I will unwrap it. It's in this cardboard to protect it. I'll see if I can get it out of the sellotaped up cardboard. There we go. So that's one bit. Uh, can you see that? And um, it's big, so I can only get one bit in shot at a time. Uh, I'm going to put this over here somewhere. Ooh, there. Not enough space. And here's the other bit. So the idea of this was it was going to be flexible with various sorts of input which you could combine. To make various sorts of playable instruments. And the other bit. So let's look at this, this first bit I open first. So this has a mess. That's supposed to. And this in shot here. Yeah. Now that goes in there. So this has piezoelectric sensors underneath these little bits of painted plywood and they act as drums uh, but the problem with it was is firstly it just outputs a MIDI note on so there, I, I've got a thing with pads on somewhere under here that's it it's not doing anything that isn't doing it's pads which just output MIDI notes and velocity and the problem with it was is the input to the piezoelectric sensor depends very much on where you hit it. Let me see if we can get one of these off. Oh yeah. Blah, reckon it. There you go. Little piezoelectric sensor. And so that basically was a non-starter and I think that was what discouraged me from the project. But it wasn't doing anything exciting and it wasn't working as well as I would have liked. So the electronics was, this is a standard processor board on the bottom. I'll take the other one apart and show you. And then this board 
uh, was the input for these and you could adjust the sensitivity with these little presets so that we're not doing we are abandoning that and I'll wrap it up and put it in a cupboard somewhere I should just dismantle it I suppose so let's have a look at the other one so this is three strings made out of stainless steel wire which is sold to uh, repair e-cigarettes the heaters in e-cigarettes apparently but it does this job so we're putting a current through the strings and this is like the wiper on a pot so if you do this you get a voltage uh, I've printed out a little thing to tell you where the notes are and these are just guitar, cheapo guitar machine heads to keep the strings tensioned. And it worked okay. Um, it is a bit high above there, and this above the, I don't know what you call it, fretboard, I suppose, and the guitar, and the copper here gets a bit tarnished. And here we have the electronics, which is loads of city up on the end resistors, which have got bent over. And uh, here's some of these boards I had made up in England, very expensively. And you can see that board there, and dusty, is the one for the strings. And that one is the one for the, what I call contact drum, the drum pads. And these both plug in, as you can see, with that one to a common processor board which this one isn't completely built oh that one, that one's built <laughs> which used a microchip pick um, and because I wanted it to be a collaborative project I wanted it to be easily solderable together so that was the best pick because I was using picks for work at the time so that was the best microchip pick I could get in the through hole package so Mm, I thought about it and although I have a number of these um, I think I'm going to abandon them sadly even the triplicate name because um, those processes just don't have a lot of go in them so I am going to keep the string controllers I don't know whether I've got any more built up but I can build some more up and I'm going to use some different processing um, some more, a more powerful processor and this thing had, it was going to have a um, radar module a little Doppler radar module of the sorts that operate automatic doors um, for doing theremin stuff and also a uh, ultrasonic module which would measure distance with the radar one would measure speed um, and I think I've got boards for those but I've never actually built any of them up um, so however our application here we've got strings for pitch but how do we drive the notes now we don't I don't want to use a any sort of trigger percussive thing because of the fact that there are plenty of triggery ones about and a keyboard will do that, a piano keyboard. So I was originally going to say use one of these as a, like a bow and I say these radar and ultrasonic ones uh, but I got into uh, electric, watching Electric herd, Herdy Gurdy and listening to Electric Herdy Gurdy uh, Principally Patty Gurdy and Gwilem Dask. My apologies for horribly mispronouncing his name. And there are links to those two folk. Go check them out. They're uh, they're good fun. Um, links in the um, description. So I thought, why not do a sort of a turntable arrangement, uh, like a hurdy gurdy handle only. We're going to do it like this. So let's get rid of this. For now, and let us bring in this, which is down, 
Um, this is intended, you put your, if you're icing a cake, which Angela does, you put your, some sort of a, a board on there and you can just turn it round and just access all the sides easily. So we're going to start with that and I have here, save me bothering to cut something out round, bought off eBay for four pounds something a disc of acrylic which will screw to the top of there like that and now I think that's going to be a bit heavy, there's going to be a bit too much momentum in it with this enormous great metal ring in it. But we're going to go with it for now because uh, we can get it working and then take a view once we try and play it. So there is our like bow or blow or in fact hurdy-gurdy handle input. So that would be like going moving a violin bow back and forth. So how do we detect what position that is? Well, we have here a little Hall Effect Semiconductor Magnetic Module, which we're going to get out of the out of its bag. So that sits and that's a special magnet, I realise it was so small, uh, which is north-south across it. Normally these little disc magnets are north-south, north one end and south the other. So that sits, oh, there's a little, just above there and turns and that chip can detect where the magnet is to 12 bits, 1496, which should be accurate enough. So we're going to try that. So what we need to do is mount this on a base of some sort. Uh, mount, stick that to the bottom of here, screw that to here, screw this to the base. And we're good. So perhaps we'll have a look at doing that next. Okay, so here's a little drawing. The outside one is the Perspex disc, which I'm using as a turntable, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, and the inner one is the outside of the ring of the, the uh, well, call it a lazy Susan. That's what they're sold as. Um, the square, the four corners of the square are the mounting holes for the circuit board for the uh, rotation centre and that hole, that slightly bigger ring there is the outside diameter of the magnet so that's on the Perspex disc. So let's uh, print that out on sticky back stuff and stick it down to the board and to the Perspex, put two, two of them I shall need and see if we can drill some holes and line everything up. Okay, so here it is on my sticky back uh, paper and that fits there, so that gets cut out. Well, do I need to cut it out? Probably not, but I will. It's down to there and then all the actual plonk that over the top, line it up mark some holes for those as I say the four corners of that are the holes for this guy which goes there and then I shall go and drill some holes downstairs so let's cut this round the outside I'm sure I need to okay just hack the bottom off it doesn't need to be cut round to the to the outside to do this job so I shall I hope okay I really did not want to come away from the backing right let's line it up this is just a hack did I say that and this white stuff ward is just a piece of shelving board got to make some shelves the kitchen and the boat. So 
There we go. And I've seen no point in making up a something kind of a fancy good and pretty looking hardware setup and then finding that it's wrong and then I've spent however much having laser cut bits made that don't fit. So there we go. We plant that there. Excuse my head. We line it up. So I reckon that's lined up. We carefully stop it going anywhere. Look. Four holes in pencil, and we're ready to do some drilling. They're not there, well, they're fine, they're fine, they'll be good. Right, I shall go downstairs and drill some holes. Okay, so here we are, we've drilled four holes, which is going to stick wood screws into this, which is essentially plywood. And here we have a big hole, so we can feed screws up into the inner ring. We're going to put screws up and nuts on the top. I know it's a bit clunky and it's going to catch your fingers, but we're just trying to get it working at this point. Just trying to get something happening. Um, and we've got the little holes for that thing. So now I'm going to print out another one of these. Get the magnets stuck on here and get some holes drilled through here to mount onto that. Um, then I guess we've got to figure out how, how high this board wants to be. Where is it? How high the board I've lost wants to be spaced up. Wants to be as near the magnet as possible I think. Uh, there is a specification so in the data sheet but I haven't looked at it recently. So Onward and upward, another of these stuck on here. Uh, four more holes drilled just by lining it up with that, and we're good. Right, was out of um, the sticky on stuff, so done it a normal paper, but don't think I need it for this. You can just plonk this on like this, hold it down, and Mark four holes, drill them, and when that's done, all I need to do is plant this on, line it up again, hold it down, apply a bit of glue, the magnet stuck to the verniers, to the so I've cut out a little hole where the uh, the magnet goes, and the magnet in place and then once the magnet stuck lift it off ah. <laughs> I might need to increase the size of that hole a bit so that's the plan firstly we're going to drill some holes for this so That hasn't moved at all. And of course the pencil right on the plastic film. Just enough. One there, one there, one there, and one there, I hope. Right, let's drill some holes. Okay, drill me holes. Hope that lifted bit is just uh, film on the back which I haven't taken off yet. So yeah here's my uh, disc for the top and the only thing I need to position is the magnet. 
Let's see if I hold that up to the camera, it'll focus. The little magnet for the uh, position sensor. So I cut a, a little round hole in here, ish, and I've glued the magnet down with um, super glue. So that's that job done. And I'm going to find this paper is super glued down. Yep, and the magnet is glued to the paper. Right. I hope the magnet is glued to the paper, I think. I mean, it's at a bit of an angle. However, this is the bottom of my map, a scratch on here and a scratch on those washers here somewhere. There's the scratch, so that goes on like that. Because these holes aren't perfectly machined, so it goes on a certain way. And I have machine drilled a hole here. Because, how do we get the screws in? I guess we screw that down, but then how do we get screws up from here and hold them? Well hopefully we can whiz it round and line each one up with that hole and put a screwdriver up through the hole. Hopefully. So, we are getting there. I also need to... Uh, this goes on a certain way as well, and I can't remember which. I need to mark that. Um, find out how high I need to um, block this PCB up so the top of the chip there is uh, not too far from the bottom of the magnet. I can't remember the exact distance. Well, there's a range of distance, but it's got to be quite close for it to work properly. Uh, so I think that is the next two jobs uh, and I also need a way of getting the wiring out from this board out of here and I hope the with I squared C isn't going to be too far between here and the processor board okay better idea for getting the connections in and out of the circuit board. So I have two washers, these are M3 washers or possibly M4 washers. So two of those because you have to space this up anyway because these two there's no gap or anything. These two are the same thickness so if I put this flat down this will drag. But if I use two of those washers And slide that. You slide some ribbon cable under there. You see that? So that gets under there and that slides free. So I just need to fasten the ribbon cable down nicely either side and we're good. So that's that. So I have four wood screws somewhere. And I can't remember again this these holes around the outside are not super precision drilled so this has a certain way of going round which I can't remember and I have marked so I need to eyeball it up so first thing I'm going to do is remove this come on hopefully um, okay two washers each I have marked with a pen that goes against that. Uh, that four screws and uh, it's not going to be easy. Now I'm going to line, line all the holes and. Okay, so this sits on four more washers, which I don't have currently. 
to space it from the outside ring so it spins freely so I need to work out how much I need to space this up so it's just short of the magnet so okay so what I have decided to do is use these guys the plastic screws pull them up through there and put a nut on the top so I can just drop the the disc over the top which means there are screw holes, screws pointing up out of there which will hit your fingers as you're using it but it's a prototype if we find it works we'll come up with a better system of mounting it and if it doesn't work we haven't expended too much energy solving that particular problem so mm -hmm. let's see if our hole works Okay, you get the idea by four. Okay, so four little plastic screws in place, and this just sits over the top of here. And the chances of these lining up with these holes is. Yep, two of them. There was no two of them. Oh, there's three of them. Oh, yeah, three of them. And this one's going to be miles out. Betcha. Where is it? There's some wriggle room. Yeah, I'm just going to mine the screws. So that's how it goes. So now we need to mount the little PCB for the sensor, the magnetic sensor, oh, which I've lost. Uh -uh. End of project. Okay, so we want to know how high we're going to mount this off the base. So we have the base here. We have the what we'll call disc. This guy here, and we've got a magnet there, which has a thickness here, and we've got this is what we want the standoff here and the PCB with the chip on it here so that is that minus that minus that uh, minus a bit more so there's a gap between there I've drawn a huge gap but in reality that gap wants to be as small as possible so let's get to doing some measuring we have here the verniers so, come on, that looks like to me 18 millimeters. Double and triple check. Uh, I don't know, 18 uh, and a half. They're going to be all different, aren't they? <laughs> so let's call that 18.5. I'm looking in millimetres here. So the thickness of the board is. Sorry, I'm going over here to the magnifier to, to read the verniers. Call that um, 
three. Uh, 3.25 We want the height of the magnet so it's gonna... Oh, that's long Which is 2 millimeters so if the magnet was touching that the height of the spacers would be 18 and a half minus 5 and a quarter 18.5 minus 5.25 which is 13.25 but bearing in mind that can be that is actually 18 to 19 depending on how you measure it so we call that 18 and a quarter 13 give it a millimeter call that 12 all right I will find 12 millimeters worth of spacers okay so full screw screws from the bottom four of these and on top of those one each of you can't see those can you two types of washers which are incredibly fiddly Over there, and we are off. Okay, quick sanity check, and that is actually way, way, way too high. So, what have I done here? All right, I know what I've done. Misreading Vernius. Right, misreading verniers with no excuse, having had my cataract fixed and new glasses that match the new lens, uh, the butt of my eye, I still get it wrong. So I misread these by 5mm, so it's actually 13 to 14. So that's 13.5 minus 5.25 is actually 8.25 so completely need to think again because these pillars are all too tall at about uh, 10 mil okay back to the drawing board so these little ones are 6.25 or a quarter of an inch and old money so I reckon if I put two of these and two of these plastic washers on each of these then we're about the right height so here we go take it all apart and put it all back together again so uh, got it down with two nuts so this whoa, nuts is I guess you're taking my word for it a bit thicker than the magnet so if I put that nut on top of the chip and stick this ruler across 
as long as this blows some kind of a gap. Which there is, I think. We're good. So we're gonna go at that. Not a big one, but I think it's gonna be enough. So should we try putting this back on here? So trying to find my scratch mark that lines up with that and it's on the underneath. Ah that wasn't very clever, so we're going to have to see if we can find a combination of holes that line up okay. Alright, that's what we're going with. Stick some nuts in here and we're good. Okay, so there it is, just needs wiring up and I discover there are, I can't see if the black screws out of a black surface. Um, regretting buying a black piece of acrylic, a clear piece, I could have seen down what was going on in there. Anyway, these four screws sticking up could be a virtue, it could make it easier to work it uh, backwards and forwards quickly rather than just putting your finger on so I might end up having those and putting some kind of a knob on them so there we have our little uh, hurdy-gurdy handle or turntable call it what you will and here it is with the the strings so we have enough to make a start and we'll get this going and uh, take a view on I think we'll probably want four strings at least but anyway, we'll get it up and running and take a view and as I said, I am going to lose the board with the picking which is under here and I'm going to have a nuclear which I'll probably just screw to a bit of board, any old bit of board, put it in the middle and I hope all these connections uh, are okay, we've been strung across here. Anyway, so the next question is, that's the hardware to cope with the input. Uh, what about generating audio? Well we've already found the Nucleo uh, isn't quite up to the the the, uh, the job on the mean green which ended up being monophonic because that was all it would do even at 180 megahertz processor speed. So I thought about Beagle boards and Raspberry Pis but in the end I concluded there is one source of processor power for which I have a very good development environment uh, which I know well and that is the good old PC. Now we are not making an instrument that needs a PC to run it but in the first instance just as a source of processor power um, I thought we'd go with that, we'd give it a try anyway uh, and then when it's all happening and we revisit the hardware and get rid of all the, some of the hackiness and make it nice I will then have to go back to looking at beagle boards and raspberry pies and so on and so forth so that's where we are in the next video we will I haven't got the Nucleo yet so that's as far as I can go I'll have the Nucleo and we'll get this working uh, so for now um, that's it. We're going to leave this one here. It's turned out longer than I wanted, as ever. Uh, sorry about all the clutter. So, uh, for now, it's uh, goodbye from Triplicate and a rather overcluttered desk. Goodbye.